Um, I'm curious how Shao wants to try and start this one out because I think you're going to be very... Seeing so many members of Rogue on the bottom side to start up the objective. Larson level 6, but low on mana. Flickback is good. Nuke doesn't really have a lot of damage to follow up, however, so Lebrov stands there menacingly. Might be able to help Nuke push out, but they're in this awkward position where Nuke doesn't have enough. Uh, I'd rather see them, like, pressure this wave and then be able to set up a dive in the next little bit for Shao. Yeah. Really overstaying his welcome. Didn't really have enough information on the map as to where everyone is, but the Blast Gun going to take him out. Rogue don't want to commit any more resources to follow up. Markoon debating. Yeah. We just watched a man have an inter just an internal existential crisis <laughs> in the enemy jungle right there. He did not know if he wanted to go for that. I think it's the right call, though. Back it up. You know that 15 seconds of the dragon, you oh. secure that. Markoon, pull back, flip back. Good damage again. Now finally able to burn through the ignite. Is it Ooh. enough? First blood? No. Okay. Sorry, audience. Sorry, that's my bad. Technically catch Shio. Just maybe skipping. Should have waited to see people on waves, I think, before he pushed up there for vision. But uh, doesn't go down. Rue connects, and Nuke is forced to flash out to safety. Small advantage. Hook is good. Shao is there. None of the damages, however, which is a bit of a problem. I don't know about that one. Shao now probably going to die here. A bit of a miscalculation from the side of BDS as to who was stronger in that equation. Look, there's a couple of people in that fight that need to take a look at Aim Trainer, but they do manage to get the hit. They manage to get someone down, and now Rogue's still here. Labrov, maybe fishing for a hook. Yeah, we're not Valorant, but I will say Aim Labs, you know? It's time. Take a look. Doesn't run his nail fast. I'm slightly furious. But, Rob, good news, aside from our Cars Final Fantasy Final uh, Fast and Furious crossovers, that a fight is happening. A TP is breaking out. Maokai going in. Marcuna on his lonesome, but has the ulti if he needs it to create a bit more space. Waiting a little bit too long, though, and just gets popped. Quick flick back there. Rogue now on the chase. An excellent knockup. Ice fired back with an ult of his own. So at least in the midst of everybody. Comp still holding on thanks to the bailout. BD has a bit overconfident. Gift rafting the Herald. And there you go, Rogue. Happy to pick it up. Everyone grouped perfectly for Zoelise's yeah. ultimate. Straight up the back of Shelly here. BDS with enough members in the area. They're going to have all five here in a second. Rogue maybe hoping to catch Nuke on the transition over. He does get hit by the wind, becomes lightning, but it's just the crash and nothing else. Rogue laser focused on the dragon. Ice, great guns for a fight. BDS has to be careful about over grouping. The fall off damage could be very real, but LeBron just gets popped. Easy pickings. Markoon's all creating a lot of space here, and BDS just at a man disadvantage. Shao's still up. I feel like they're hoping for the, the smite steal at this point because there's not really a lot else to play for and those rogue gratuitously overstep. So at least still has his ultimate as well. So if you try and come through this choke point, you just end up perfectly for that. And again, I mean, they end up focusing the Renata who just gets yoinked back up at the Callista. Full trade for rogue. Yeah, and even now, right, it's like you've got two items coming in for ice. He's going to be totally fine. BDS again, just playing it slow. They're under no real threat to try and push forward here because they do just have the scaling. I mean, that brought fishes, but may have oh, actually taken too far. Unraveled Earth, buys a bit more space. Zoli's going in, nice handshake. Shao maybe not the priority target, but they do have enough damage to burn him down. Ice, good damage over the wall. Finn now coming in as well. Comp now on a rampage. Ice finding the long range route. Markun no longer under the protection of the ultimate. Lebrov going forward, trying to find the hook, forcing the flash out, flash out from Larson. Ice, Shao's starting to look pretty damn tanky as well. BDS and they do come the to just start Baron. Good vision yeah. control, Blue Trinket comes out. BDS probably just back off here. Severing Bolt going down. All right, Rogue now see the Baron resetting. LeBrov going in. This time the hook goes straight into Marcoon. Marcoon can just ulti, gets himself a little bit more space. That's one now taken down. Ice, decent ulti under the backside, taking about 50% of Zoelise's life. But LeBrov consistently trying to be that playmaker. <laughs> hey, you got here. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Every day. Every day, Rob. And uh, Rogue also wondering how they got here in this situation. But the good news is they have Callista. The situation being Baron. Marcoon, they're doing good damage. BDS need to bully their way in. Finn has a great flank. This is good. He's, they know he's there, though. They should Wall definitely know he's in. there. Oh, rinse and repeat. They're just walling off half the team, but the pullback is good. BDS so far winning this fight. Ice now trying to get away. He doesn't have great guns for the fight. Finn going gold and buys a moment. Gets a little bit more space. Zoe on the tree, getting lower and lower. LeBron waiting over the wall, not doing a whole hell of a lot, but Ice finally swapping guns. Nuke now stepping forward. Threaded volley to try to finish off Marcoon. Flash forward. Nuke gets the kill. LeBron waiting. Where's that hook gonna go? Right on the Finn. Oh, punch! Knock up into the sky. Finn running for his life. Flickback still managed to catch him. Ice on the chase. Rogue getting pushed away from the pin. It felt like a guaranteed thing. Now there's a TP on the mid wave because Larson just needs to get the hell out. And Zoelise has been left to die. He's flashing. You should not have flashed. Why did he flash that? He was <laughs> he dead. He should not have flashed. No. And Finn yeah. Diesel's face on a car does it again, folks. We found the key to getting them to fight. Just kidding. Oh, there. you started talking about it again. The Larson was the fight. Larson there. It does Severing work. Ball. It works. But now the TP's got... Lars, this is psycho. 
Talia's on the way in. Larson is very likely going to die here. Talia has so much movement speed. Yep. Now that's a slow. Larson has to flash. Free summoner spell. Larson just really wants to make sure they do not get this Baron. This is BDS's path Can back into the game. Bolt chill? No, he's not going to try and go for it. Okay. And then Zolis <laughs> flashes, which... Bit of an upsie. It's just... It's, you know, when you're playing D&D &D and it's like... It goes okay, back, someone dies. Gonna, the guy in heavy armor is like... I'm gonna do the sneak roll, and you're like, this. There's, there's no, no way, way this is gonna go well. Then just hit him straight nat 20s. But so is Nuke, baby! Two-man knockup, comp. They're taking out Nuke will finally pop, courtesy of the spiraling despair. Finn's still going in, but he's gonna get stunned up by the lingering unraveled earth. And Adam, he's just going to town in the back line. This game was neck and neck. Rogue thought that they were pushing an advantage, albeit very slowly. All it took was that single Baron. BDS in full control. And they probably just end the game right here, 32 minutes in. Very odd game of League of Legends, but BDS, they take those. Sheo offers his life as sacrifice in penance for whatever we just watched. <laughs> um, BDS win, Rogue coming in on an 0-3, rough start for both these teams, but somebody had to win, and BDS coming out on top as the KDA plays come through and the Brav's gonna whip his final hook, but he will take out the Nexus. That is one of the games of League of Legends of all time. And BDS managed to slow down a pace at least enough, or at least Rogue doesn't do anything enough that BDS gets scaled and they eventually take over. But uh, yeah, that's that's a. And look, I'm not going to tell you that there's uh, a silver lining on the road platform right now. I'll just say hearts out to the players because obviously this is not the performance that they want to show on stage, and the fact that there's still has been played top lane once Wait. in LPL and once in LCK. It is one win, one loss. It is Smolder top. Okay, I'm kind of surprised. So, uh, we saw some good heads up level one strategies in the games yesterday about like placing vision and brushes to kind of set up range advantage in top lane. But Hillisang has been caught out now. Does get to start with a Doran shield. Karzi's also started with Doran's blade. So it's not clear who will and will not be farming on the bottom side at this point. As it's just going to be infinite pressure on the bottom side for SK. Yeah, and that's the. Oh, Video going to get hit as well. Nisky. Look back, but Video taking the worst end of that trade. SK are kind of just winning everywhere, Rob. Yeah, it's not looking particularly pretty. And I wanted to give a shout out to Niski because honestly, I think he's been playing absolutely phenomenal this, this weekend. He's had some great plays, his dives. Dive on the bottom side. Cleanse coming out from Karzi. Nice flash back there, but living just for a brief moment longer. Can they finally take down the kill? One more auto should do it. First blood for SK. Good dive to kick things off. A TP from Video as well to try and deny any further play on towards Hillisang. Daglas is going to make his way down, but I think SK are just out. Flash out. And I'm wondering if there was something else in the tank in terms of what they thought they would be able to get done early game with the Smolder, or if they just firmly believe that if they go late enough, it does not matter, because there's well, the losing zoom on the bottom side. It doesn't do any damage yet, but just the stacks are stacking. 52, eight minutes in, not bad. Hillisang, tanky, lockup is there, Root is there, ulti now gonna be forced out, Hook not quite gonna take him to safety, but good that Hillisang's at least able to force the ulti out of Exekick. He can survive one mess up. Two mess ups, not so hot. Three mess ups, though, might be coming through for Vitality. It's just stock cards getting there faster. And now, yep, potentially another kill gonna come through. Knockback is clean from Dag. Was VTO holding on for a brief moment? Flash in, flick back as well. Mom coming to help. Photon still living. Another kill coming through for the Dragon. And I'm beginning to. It's a 3k gold deficit, and Vitality still managed to go even in the exchange. It was a nice ult from Daglas. Okay, though, to just further snowball this lead. You don't want to give Vitality too much time. They're going to have excellent wave clears. They get those first items under their belt. So for now, you're in just a hugely favored state because there's just not enough wave clear there quite yet. But as Photon gets more stacks, more items, VTO gets more stacks and items, it's going to be hard to find that angle. Flash forward, handshake from DOS. Isma now ready to follow up. Excellent hostile takeover onto VTO. Clean pick on the bottom side. Niski still on the chase. Gonna go for the alt first, just to hit confirm the root follow-up. Well played, good diligence, but Dagla's still a very fast Yordle. Is he fast enough? No. Pushback coming through. SK get another one. Five to one, the kill score. Ah, well, Dragon's just taken. But I think you could have just forced Vitality off of both of these objectives, to be perfectly honest with well, now they're just trying to force mid, they can. it looks like. Get a little bit more. Hillisang does manage to hook out. Niski now wandering in. That is not a real melee minion in the pit. Knockback from Dagla's again, good. But meanwhile, Hillisang gonna get cut down. Wave crashing into the Tower of SK, so they're gonna struggle to force down that Tier 1, but they want to transition this advantage up to the top side of the map. Struggle for them is both top and mid already pushed in, so there's not an immediate opportunity to take a tower. Midwave does recenter oh. those. It's not the most important part of this kit when you're not in solo queue, but they're probably just gonna start diving towers right now. 
Knockback's good, oh. but the immediate follow-up is there. Ooh, whiffs completely from Isma though. Maybe anticipating a sidestep. Karzi is gonna get pulled back and killed. It is only a support, but X kick now unstoppable. Yeah, this I, is I don't know, I think Isma was trying to force the or predict the flash from video as he came over the walls, so that's why he went a little bit skewed with it, but either way, they so much get Karzi off the back. And but again you're in picks and bands, it feels like, and uh, or SK have punished at every turn as Niski's now getting caught out. No damage to finish him off, however. They will get to real items in a little bit, Vitality <laughs> made to do damage, but here you go, you've called this. The five man mid. Hey, we're just gonna take this turret. Push in, send it all. Niski in trouble, pull back. Root is good. Ulti to follow. Now flash forward. Three man from Niski. Exekick now dominating, just continue to lay down, Photon. Trading back a bit of damage. Niski mounts up in the Herald to survive. He's going after Photon. He just drifts right through him. Oh, it's the car's point all over again, baby. Fast and Furious SK want to end this one quick. They got dinner plans. Hey, apparently they're just going to absolutely mow down Vitality. Two terrors taken off of that, and the rip count faded into the distance on that top side. And beautiful stuff. I there should be absolutely no way. I mean, you're still a, just a, under 100 stacks away on Photon. He's not really a threat. He, even to, if you do get there, it's a nice to have the execute, but you need to get the execute damage, and I just don't see anyone dealing damage. Doss flashing forward. Doss. In the grass, the BTO getting cut down again. Quick pick up there, handshake, and I will say, Doss with a lead on this Renata. You know, all the way back even to last year. Right, but it's just SK that far ahead. It doesn't matter, like, third dragon goes down, they already got the pickup video, you're not getting anything out of that. And it's 17 and a half minutes. They are 13 to one. All that remains on the outskirts of the Vitality base is that top tower, and I don't know if that's going to survive either. I don't know either. Hillisang certainly is not going to survive. Karzi now running. Isma determined to run this kill down. Irrelevant. Jumping in. That's a killing spree. Folks, it's an 11k gold lead. Dida, we can only say the numbers so many times. The adaptation instead of the essence reverse. Hillisang, again, has money, so can walk into brushes a bit more confidently. Smolder. Vitality know they can't overcommit in that fight. If they can kill Exekick, it's a different story, and uh-oh. That's just a melee minion. Wrong! It's Niski! Surprise, Photon! You were out of position. You didn't even know it. SK, grab another one. Yeah, I think Photon is working up towards that Iceborne Gauntlet, so at least it'll be a little... He can still have a chance when he gets this, there, but it's like... There's this yeah. lingering doubt in the back of both I know of he our can't, minds. right? But like, every part of my beat is like, he can't. But, he can't. Just, uh... but there's the question. Hillisang walks in, offers himself up to SK on a silver platter. They politely accept. They like the flavor of Nautilus. Happy to have another kill. Hostile takeover comes in. Karzi gonna auto attack his own ward, and uh, SK looking to knock that down. Mom intervening, not super effective. Kind of negligent parenting, and there's Niski. Unstoppable as he goes over the wall. Baron also now getting it taken out. Thumbs up for VTO. He's still okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh God, that's right, Berlin. Keep that energy. That are the 2-0 over the course yeah, of this we, weekend. I was like, I was ready. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, the uh, stories we were ready to tell about Photon versus Irrelevant. How hyped this matchup was going to be. What VTO was going to do. And now, what's he going to do? He's getting run down by a bear. Which understandable. You know, understandable. Four zero five for real. Uh, I'm running, I just keep reading the scoreboard, Rob. I don't know what else to tell the people at home. <laughs> I think that uh, Photon needs to die to, actually, yeah, twice more, so he didn't have four deaths with everyone else, and then Hades just zero blood. There I think go. that's the... Because he's always a cut above. Yeah. All right. Niski keeps the pressure up. Vitality. Get up! This is their fight! Get up! The moment of opportunity passes, however. Poppy buys a bit of space. Mom again, returning to the fold. She's all bark, no bite. Not too much. There's, there's also a redemption coming in. GTO <laughs> maybe. Miracle click back on the five. Can he find the angle? Niski going for the angle. Jumps in. Gets it. Both towers now disabled. Double kill. And in 23 minutes and a couple extra seconds, SK will obliterate Vitality. Mom, looking a little bit more what they say spicy is in Germany rather than anywhere else in the world. True. <laughs> that time True. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, a great game from SK. Clean. Uh, Vitality, three losing lanes. Couldn't do anything. I, like, I just, I, 
As it, I talked about how I expected this Karma to go mid lane, completely forgot that it is also another flex pick. The beauty of this draft from Mad Lions gave them a lot of flexibility with both the Volley Bear and See, the Oh, Yoya, yeah. he's made it back. He's walking towards bot, but he will be too late here. All he can do is get that camp you were mentioning before. That means Peach gets the dragon, which let's be real. Very careful. You can see he is suspicious. It's just a question of how far will he oh, step. He's walked up too far, hasn't he? El Yoya jumps on in, and a cleanse won't be in question. Patrick knows he's dead. First blood to El Yoya. Ultimately, I will say that's a mistake from Patrick. The information was clearly given from Peach, or at least someone on the side of Giant X. But again, it's that threat that made him cautious. Now, bot side with kills, El Yoya. Mike gets bot out, flashes, gets the cleanse this time. Remember, he has the storm bringer to come on down as for MDK, Alvaro saves the day. Noyo will be spat back out, out of harm's way as Giant X bring free to the shot. Flash exchanged for cleanse there. Ignar threw out the ignite. He will connect another hook. And Doing it again. Giant X looking for a bit more of a fight. The re-engage. The knock-up is there. El Yoya, remember, still with the ulti out. The darkness comes through, and with that ult of center, they buy more time. Stormbringer on the spot, which Peach flashes away from. Now Ignar looking for a re-engage as he's just hit level six. Depth charge can bring this back in, but for Patrick, no chains of corruption, and everyone walks away. Midwave, because they bought time. El Yoya now has had the chance to spend that gold. Alvaro has his ulti back up as well. Keep in mind, as Frescaui now spotted out in this angle, Ignar sets up for a dredge line, connects as well. Jackie's Odo chain has of corruption TP. was used. You mentioned that Odo should be coming in, but as Alvaro picks up the trigger, when is going to be the answer for Peach and Jackie's now there? The target, the jungle's just erupted and destroyed. Frescaui nukes him to oblivion as Odo Arme now comes through. El Yoya was saved. But as Otto flies on through, his damage immense, but they can't finish the job. Frescaui comes on a back end as well, and Giant X are getting collapsed on. Oh, dearie me. Jackie's trying to bring back the play, but now the Merwin has shown up. It's Jackie's in the middle of it all as well. One by one, they go to their deaths, and the Mad Lions Koi are an Which means that he's now the side lane threat against Odo Omni. Peach with the ult. Fixed. Onto Merwin. This Karma has flash available, gonna use it, gets out of range, but Depth Charge follows through. Chain of Corruption. Misses here, Dredgeline pulls back in. Again, a lot used, and he's taking a while to die. In the meanwhile, Frescaui makes it a Take over the game. Speaking of pockets of vision. Dredgeline, depth charge, knock him up. This time, everything connects. Shutdown, unfortunately, goes to Peach, but it's another pick as El Yoya doesn't use the Stormbringer to get out of this one. He's caught out later, does he, though? But Dredgeline back in. Alvaro, you hero, trying to get to the blast cone. Not in time. El Yoya is still sent outwards because of it, though, as he runs on all fours, trying to get away, while Giant X has not just found a pick here. They've found a pick mid. And Matt Coy lose two in a quick instant. What is happening? Uh, MDK expecting oh. Peach and Ignite to be sitting in the... And the brush, He's another engage in mid. This time, Senna and Tom Kench, though, they can live the sustained battle. Ult comes through. Alvaro and Super happy to take this as overheated Rumble runs for his life. Now onto the next target. Ignar re engaged, but Alvaro has got a meaty shield on him. Patrick can help seal that, but Alvaro holds the charge and eventually pops it. They stay true. And for Giant X, they back. I believe that was the ultimate invested from Patrick. Oh, we're going to get a replay of exactly what happened. So Mew and TP is in. He actually finds himself in a one versus two. Really good ultimate. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that was a really nice combo. That ultimate really on nice. top of ulti. Means that they ward. He's taking it cautiously. Super and Alvaro are also nearby. And a note on supports this game. I mean, Alvaro has been a saving grace. Can he do it again? Ignar jumps on in that wall. Beautiful. Super's caught out without the time. Can she? Alvaro flashes to get nearby. Saves the day, but not for El Yoya. Giant X again as a five man core. Huge. But as the AoE comes through, Mirwin tries to contribute. Add in some flavor himself. Jumped on his peach going on top of this karma. But for Giant X, they've still done the damage. Everyone's still alive. And it, okay, we talked about it. They're a skirmish heavy team, and sometimes they can get lost in the source. We've seen Engage coming out from MBK. Good route down. Ignar, though, not the unbeefiest of persons, if that's even a word. Peach runs into the choke, teleports, super slow. Rescali's in an awkward spot here. Oh, Jackie's as well is in a great spot, too. Look at him go, fate sealed. And it's Merwin whose death now rings next. Super doesn't get charmed out, or rather chained down. Elioia now running for his life, but he's on the wrong side of the map. Super is, too. Like I said, Betis, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse for MDK. As now you better believe that Baron, once Peach is done with this, should be the go. I mean, I don't think Peach should be here. Him the one chasing for this kill, I think, is... Can he get the uh, smite? Oh. Nope, that's going to be an execute. Should be able to get some of the XP off the back of that, but Look that's going to be a Baron for Giant X. And let's not forget that this started with MDK trying to collapse onto Ignar. Yep. He buys a lot of time thanks to the Celestial Opposition, mitigating a lot of that initial damage. But he basically forces Giant X into this very narrow choke point with which... Oh. 
They are the same thing. One is made with tomatoes, one is made Actually, with I sugar. Don't, I don't want you to come over. <laughs> but Giant X, as they push through this turret, note that Mad are looking to fight this. That's because El Yoy with the ulti up and available. Oh, Super. Jackies. Maybe he shouldn't fight anymore. Over the wall, Peach is ready to go Ooh. in as well. Equalize is beautiful. And Fresco went golden right in the middle of the hot fire. He'll get burnt as now with the ulti following through. It's Giant X cleaning house. And Jackie's the rookie that could. On to the rival in Frescawi. He'll get burnt by another Odo. Nice shot. And all of a sudden, we turn the game around. It has been great for the past seven, eight minutes for Giant X. And it keeps getting better. A crazy turnaround from Giant X. What felt like a game that was done and dusted. They find pick after pick. They repeatedly punish MDK. Now 11 to 6. El Yoya off on the flank for Scowie. Starts to make his way back. Good equalizer. Super again tagged out. Alvaro won't care too much, but enables Giant X to step up to the turret. Remember, with the grubs in hand, they're doing some DPS to this inner turret as El Yoya looks for a position to flank, a position to entry. But Giant X just turned back around and go, nah, we'll take it this time. El Yoya, what can you do? Turret's going to drop down. He's by himself. He's in a bounce house. El Yoya, nothing is the answer. Giant X, take one for free of charge. And Matt Koy is sent running again. Jackie still has his ultimate. He's going to use it. Oh, fate is sealed. At this point, maybe I should look away. Super's burnt down as well. Jackie's having another great start to the split. At least today, to say the least. As Giant X looking for their first win on the board. They'll forget mid for the time being. They'll forget Frescaui. They're on to a Nexus turret. And they're on to the last members of Mad Koi. As for Giant X, this could not have come sooner. To end this week number one of spring with a win means everything. Especially against the finalists in Mad Koi. As Patrick likes to add one on top. The Giant X, welcome to the Spring Win Club. I was not expecting the game to end that way. 27 minute victory. Somehow. Bear in mind, the kills were one to five. Yep. They ended 16 to six. Oh. Mala and Skoy only found a single kill off the back in the late yeah, game yeah, in terms of, of how. It's just about like how easy does he have necessarily access to the back line. Maybe he takes more of like a peeling role and he actually just works with Flacket to make sure that he stays. wasn't the best either. Now it feels like that everyone is playing on all four cylinders as Razork looks for a dive in top lane. Yeah, speak of one of them, right? I mean, Razork diving this. This is the start for one to the flash for flash. And as the bear claws come out, now Oscar in for the slice and dice. And it's a good night, isn't it? Oscar in with first blood, and that's one way to start off a game. No TP available. in the early game. Yep. It's just the uh, it's the W that gives you so much power. Going to tick over to level six, and oh. they're going to dive him again. Stormbringer time. OK, turret about to turn off for a predetermined period of time. Doesn't even need it. Doesn't even Available need. for us. Look, I think Yankos is going to get there in time. The problem is Humanoid is now joining the party. Trying to see if Oscar Inan has ult as well. Three versus two, as you said. Spirit Rush starts it off. The World Ender out. Humanoid gets the charm, though. Nicely done. Wonder does have healing, though, and they haven't finished the job. Razork, without the Stormbreaker, makes this a messy dive. Sonic Wave also has its own damage factor, as Spyro. here comes a very sus minion. Charm doesn't connect. I wonder who that is. Well, Nico's going to fly in. Razork's just dead. And Team Heretics are probably laughing at that one. They finally get a punish onto the aggression of Fnatic. Guys that like reading books and don't want anyone to touch them. No, I do believe that they are, in fact, gods. Uh, or ascended, if nothing else. Uh, yeah. They're one of them. Uh, Zarath is just some guy who went into like a, a mechanic op shop and just picked up all the parts. Team Heretics are once again getting dope. And guess what? It's Wonder again. Holy moly, can someone give him a break? Like, dude, he's 0 and 3. Leave him alone. Uh, no, is their answer to that. <laughs> Which is probably smart. Over the course of LCS, LEC, with a lot of success throughout. How are they going to bring this rookie in and try and achieve similar results? We can talk about that later. There's his answer. Good Tangle Bob and Pop Blossom. He disguises. There you go. Spyro comes in with a really good setup for team. Power is still very healthy, though. Jun and Razok are forcing their way in. Now Noah is on his way down. TPs are available. Flash, Magnet Storm comes through. Spyro just used everything for that little pick. And as Tangle Barbs might buy him some time, it won't buy his life. Big chomp from Razork and double TP oh, from double Fnatic. TP. There's five members down, bot all of a sudden, and Fnatic are like, go. A little excessive, I feel. Probably. Uh, they were already winning out in the three versus three. I don't think they needed to send everyone down here. Dragon going to be spawning in two minutes, so that TP isn't going to be available. And no, now you've not. left Humanoid isolated. He does have his ulti available, I believe, with Flash there too. He burns that first. Maybe the ulti's just off cooldown. There we go. Spirit Rush flies through, but everything in the kitchen sink. 
a good pick to punish. Oh, oh. Over to mid to then unlock that tower, but they're very committed to securing this tier two in the bot lane. The Herald's going to take it down to about half. Look at all the family around it, though. I mean, they've got five grubs for a reason. Noah now setting up, but Zyru was in faint. Oh, my Lord. I think he was disguised there. He was Otherwise, disguised as a minion, and he again. thought he was in a 1v1. Two, oh, there we go. There right. we go. He is in the future, eh? Good pick. Hang on, Sonic Wave as well. Dredge line, knock up. This is great. But Team Heretics, a kick back, though, is too early. Jun also flashes away, but that Sonic Wave is illegal. Yay, cost Lee Sin, baby. As Mum doesn't do anything in the back line, but the Pop Blossom might. The knockup's good. Zyru sets up for another Ross Grin in the back line, too. A double root while Smolder's doing the thing. Flapping the wings, sending out the breath, spitting on them all. Blackett carrying the rest of it. And Team Heretics bide their time once again in a the game. They find an amazing fight. Fnatic can't lock down a single member. And Heretics tear them apart. Four members down, the Baron is unlocked. And just like that, Heretics have turned this game around. Humanoid's the last factor, but Trimby's here. Is he alone? The answer is yes. Just trying to get him away from the Baron, but that gold I was talking about earlier, send it away, it doesn't matter. Team has some structure there that's really gotten them to this point. Gold is now even, they look for a pick onto Yangos for Fnatic, trying to find themselves back into this game. But again, we talked about those Flacket Sacks. Well, hang on. The Dragon of the West has found Humanoid. Spirit Rush out one more time. Orbit Deception is good, but Yankos is here to finish the deal. Humanoid has Flash available, but if he burns it, he's just going to waste it. Charm out. Yankos is playing with him. He is playing with him. And Team Heretics is playing with their food, which is now Fnatic. Unstoppable is Yankos. Okay, trying to assist Wonder there. Nice Q. Oscar now, 50% HP. Oh, he might actually die here. I mean, getting slowed down. Wonder absorbs the damage. Nice flash over from Trimby. The setup as General Zyro comes in. The Dragon of the West with the Dragon of the East in Flacca to clean it all up. A double goes over his team heretics by their time. They play it patiently, and boy, is that what they're known for. Trimby still looking for more. He has his eyes set on Oscar Rinin. Flack it over the wall. Nice dredge line. Execute once again. Flackwood will take it. And what a turnabout game. That is two in a row. But Team Heretics really setting this game up to be theirs. I mean. It was such a great flash from Trimby that I think all of Fnatic saw we need to protect Humanoid. And they were not prepared for Spyro's air as well. The passive damage getting elongated is such a pain. As now as we group up towards mid, I mean, Fnatic are trying to pick. They look so desperate here, but as Trimby hooks his old team, he says, how do you like me now? Oh. But wait, John jumps on him, but it won't be okay because Mum flies through as well. This is the problem. A great engagement as Flacker gets locked on down. He's already killed so many people. A triple kill flies through as Wonder vs. Oscar in, and then Yankos in the mix is all we have left. That was the best Fnatic could do. Now as this Renekton tries to fight it out, I just don't think he has it in him. Going away, slice and dice. Baron is like, what the heck is happening here? <laughs> Just an onslaught and an ace. And even though Fnatic brought guns to the party, it looks like... Yep. They were looking to get that 3-0 weekend. Razor currently standing on a ward hook. Dredge line again. Razor knocked on up and you can just see this damage. Stormbringer's down, but he has no chance. Mum doesn't even get to talk to the bear. <laughs> That's going to be a Baron as well. Unless Fnatic can make some sort of miracle happen. This is Heretic's game to lose. An impressive bounce back from them. It was a tough early game, but just like we saw in the previous one, they found their bounce back. Yeah. They found nice fights in this game. I think the jury is still out as to where to rate Heretics in the LEC right now, but uh, Fnatic definitely going to feel Good. the aftermath of this jury. Flash back and storm again. Very loud from the other room. The knockup comes through. Trippy re engages though. Spyro's taking all the damage here, but as the kick from Yankos comes back, it might have sealed the deal. But Noah's still alive. Very moment, ladies and gentlemen, but is Smolder too much? You have to ask, no. Oscar Rinnan sends him to the deep end. That little baby dragon now dead and harvested as one to set in the middle, but Noah's still free firing. Just remember, Smolder's OP, but Zeri was here first. Wow, some very fancy feet coming out. Largely untouched on the back line. Flacket loses a lot of HP. Oscar Rinnan finally gets on top of him and shuts him down. And then Spyro's ultimate really doesn't connect onto anyone.
Very well played. Oh, Fight front and onto the right target to keep your eyes on Flacker here. Trapped in the bit. The pit, rather, but does, of course, have his E to get to safety. Where is Spyro? He's a plant! Yes. Oh, okay. He's thinking for the time being. Pop Blossom is there. As he goes gold, he finds Humanoid over the wall, and Mum helps out, but Spyro is in the middle, and to his death with the burn down! They try so hard to get the Flacker, but look at him go! He's 12 years old, and he's taken on gold! John runs in. Everyone runs in. But all he is, is lambs to the slaughter. Flackhead is just way too strong. It looked promising for Fnatic. I thought they could turn it around, but it was not enough. They're going to hand another kill over to Flackhead. 13, 2 and 5. Big smiles on the faces of Jankos as Heretics look to go 2 and 1. A huge win against Fnatic. As Betty has said before, this means the world for Team Heretics, who struggled last split. But against Fnatic, they take away their deathless record. They end the week 2 and 1. And we're going to start singing Team Heretics praises if we see more like this. To a degree. <laughs> I mean, towards the end of those fights, Spyro was getting caught out, and I thought Fnatic had found their angle in, shut down Spyro, and then they can win the fight, but it had gone to a point where full build Smolder, just sneezing on him, spinning on them. He was doing way too much. Look at Bo playing spoiler to try and counter gank this entire game and get the lane through safely. Yeah, my, my only uh, issue with Casey's draft right now is the... Uh, he was M MVP quite by far in mid. Yes. Yeah, everyone said caps is. Under turret, is this an issue? Ignite down. Targamus misses Wait a, a knock up. Under turret, Casey pushed too far. Han Summer still has his flash available. He's waiting for upset to show, but Targamus now with no mana in the middle of no man's land is still a Tarm Kench. You're aware of this, there's no vision in River. A bit of danger. Help. Here comes the engage. Okay, Han Summer safe for now. Achu slows them down. Boaz kick available. And oh. flashes a flash on top with Sake and Shockwave. And Han Summer is better for it. Or should I say worse? Mickey up next. The range there. They tank it up. And all of a sudden, KC on the board with one big power play. What? Raining started off. G2 already have the first one. Can they secure the second? Han Summer in a bit of an awkward angle here. Is indeed. G2 are sitting in the pit. There's a the flash from Minky, but he gets no one. Mum onto Targamus? I don't think so. They're going to dive on in. KC have already got the burn of ulties. Dragon goes down, but it's Pop Blossom on Cap. Tries to save the plate. Maybe it's okay. Cataclysm out. Flashes forward. Targamus saved. Upset though. KC are fine with this. Oh, they're damn fine. Broken Blade has come in late, and he'll die late as well. Just like that, it's G2, 6-0. and zero. Is off the back here on the Raptors. Dragon's going to be gone. Broken Blade's just going to try and do something. Explosive cars, close, but it is Bo who secures for the second campaign. So the cross map is, in fact, just going to come through from G2. They'll take the top. Yeah, 20 that because I'm like, man, three items not already grabbed by the Q. Extra range. Finally siege onto this. They're looking for the oh, fight. Oh, it's perfect. Oh. It's perfect. It's the Thunderdome. KC knocked around, sent around, and as the burn follows through, Saken's up next, spitting hot fire and spitting the dirty sneeze from Han Summer. Cabo runs away as well, he had no Megana. And all it takes is one fight in the mid-game, all it takes is one moment in the mid-game. That you can never really afford to count them out. A great fight found in the mid lane. KC were caught completely by surprise. The Baron is going to be unlocked. No jungler, no smite. Can KC stop this from being secured? Baron's going to go down. All it takes is a smite. Yike can't let it go, and he won't. As now low health bars bring KC in to try and get a fight off the back. And Mickey is taken out. So only four Barons left. As KC continue to chase up. Caps now out with the Mega Blast Cone. Cabo flashes Tangle Barbs. Caps dies too. How much else can they get onto Broken Blade? Is Targa alone? No, Cabo's about to go to Mega. Waiting to fight this off. Oh. This is too far forward. Targa can still get executed with the shield down. Mum flies through. But no cue oh. is Cabo. Flies over his teammates. And now Baron be damned. Yike comes in, makes it a yakety sack. We're dancing around. Bow's there. Flag and drag. Shockwave dead under the turret. What is going on, everyone? It's a fire sale. It is a bloodbath in the top lane. Casey wanted to take his use. Everything is, is gone. And so Casey's just looking to get pick after pick, but we're oh, straight yeah. back into the action. Explosive cast, beautiful. Sagan's caught out. The Orianna's caught out. Take away the Baron, sure, but G2 keep taking away lives from KC to make this a more even game. Buff also likely going to go over. 
the gold has basically been equalized. G2 gonna put themselves on soul point. KC have shown some impressive fights. I love the confidence that we have been seeing from this KC squad. They seem much more coordinated, even if it was a bit overzealous towards the end of that skirmish. Yeah. They were able to get so many Barons off of G2. You can see only a thousand gold is the Baron oh. power play. But G2 are unrelenting in their aggression. Bo and Tagmas lucky to get out. In a turret next on the menu is for G2. Four members approach mid. Bo's trying to defend, but how ambitious is he right now? Sonic Wave goes to a miss. In a turret drops on down. The onslaught with, I think we've got one Baron left remaining. Of course, it was Broken Blade who still survived. So with that one Baron push, Casey are getting onslaughted. Explosive cast, see you later. Yeah, I ain't gonna climb the drag away to safety. That. Okay. Oh, nice in danger. Oh, nice. Flag and drag, the timing comes oh. back. Top oh. oh! It's clapped! Everybody, you know the story, you know the legend. They might look good from KC, but then you clap your hands, put them together, and the deed is done. The shockwave was so good from Seiken, but the ultimate from Caps was even better. And just like that, G2 will end this game. He performed out of his mind in winter, and he continues to do so again in spring. G2 may have looked out in the early game, but never, ever doubt them as their mid-game continues to flourish. 3-0 at the end of the first week. That's G2. Caps, man. I really thought Saken had found the shockwave to win them another fight, but then he just goes and one-ups him. Caps rated undisputed best mid laner last split, and he's looking to do the same here.